What up, Chingu? I'm Leon, the paperback maniac, coming straight at you with another vintage horror book review. Today, we are taking a look at The Fair Rules of Evil by David C. Smith. This book was published by Avon in 1989. I will begin by reading the synopsis from the back. The Journey. When his parents were killed, David sought consolation for his grief in the priesthood. His sister Ginny saw something else. She tried to contact them. Then Ginny was found in a field, naked, catatonic, lying in a circle drawn in the mud. She hadn't been raped. Her body was unharmed, but her mind was somewhere else, suffering unimaginable tortures. And for David, who had just left the seminary, a new journey was about to begin. A journey into a shadowy hell of demonic forces and creatures that fed on human terror. A hell that shouldn't exist, but does. So this novel opens with David, a young man who is questioning his faith and decides to leave the seminary. Uh, he had joined the church or had turned to the church about a year ago to help him deal with the death of his parents but he's just not feeling it anymore and he thinks instead maybe he'll move back home uh, perhaps move uh, back into the house that he and his sister Ginny had inherited from their late parents but then his sister Ginny is found uh, lying naked in a field surrounded by a ring of melted candles now, uh, when David hears this, he rushes back home, worried sick, uh, and he finds his sister in the hospital, a uh, catatonic, and no one knows exactly what happened to her. Uh, the doctors, you know, say she wasn't molested. Uh, they wonder if perhaps uh, she had gotten into some witchcraft because of the way she was found, you know, with these, uh, you know, candles and the, the strange jewelry that she had on. Uh, so David goes back home, um, you know, goes through his sister's things and goes in her room, finds all of these boxes of you know, candles and incense and, and books on spells. He also finds her diary in which uh, she mentions a man by the name of Theodore Fry, a professor uh, who she is ecstatic to meet and who is helping her. Um, and, you know, and she's talking about the conversations they're having about spirituality and, you know, life and God and all these things. And then the diary kind of uh, devolves into this indecipherable code that uh, David can't make out. So uh, David uh, decides he wants to get some answers, so he uh, goes and seeks out uh, this Professor Fry, this Theodore Fry whom Jenny had talked about in her diary, and he, he shows up at uh, Professor Fry's rural house with Jenny's diary, and uh, Professor Fry tells David that uh, Jenny had been uh, sitting in on his lectures and that she had refused to accept the death of their parents and wanted uh, to find a way to contact them. And so she had, you know, been training and learning the ways of ritual magic. And uh, Fry uh, posits that perhaps uh, Ginny had been successful in opening a door between our worlds because the universe, uh, Fry tells David, is just completely alive with forces and spirits. And this could have been a little too much for Ginny and caused her to, you know, go catatonic. So... Uh, Around the same time now, David is approached by a retired police inspector named Matthew Long, a dude who uh, wears a long trench coat and is missing his left hand curiously. And this uh, inspector Long warns David that in fact the, the uh, professor, uh, Theodore Fry, whom uh, David had seen is actually a very dangerous man, an evil man. In fact, uh, a, an evil sorcerer uh, who is 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 really uh, someone you know dangerous uh, to to deal with. And that in fact, uh, this Inspector Long has been uh, kind of following uh, Theodore Fry and, and kind of pursuing him in, a, in almost a kind of cat and mouse game for for many years now. And that uh, he may be responsible for a number of uh, of deaths in upstate New York. 
and he gives David a talisman and and says that David needs to you know be careful. And then uh, this inspector Long actually goes to uh, Theodore Fry's house after uh, witnessing this terrifying vision from an alternate reality. Uh, and in a in a really cool scene, he actually shows up at uh, at Fry's house, kind of sneaks in. Finds the professor up in his attic altar wearing this black robe and surrounded by candles doing some incantation. And uh, Inspector Long, you know, whips out his gun, tries to shoot uh, Theodore Fry. Of course, the bullets uh, do nothing. Um, and then the, uh, the Theodore Fry basically magically pins um, the inspector to the wall. And uh, the inspector is, you know, just f like pinned against the wall. Then the mo the the floor starts swirling, moving beneath him before uh, dropping away altogether. And then and then he's kind of just suspended there over this black void. And then he hears these things coming from the from the wall behind him. And then these uh, like hot tentacles kind of erupt through the plaster of the wall and sort of grip him. They clutch his throat. As he's dealing with the tentacles, he looks down into the abyss below him and then sees what looks to be these uh, sort of eels or, or uh, demonic sharks uh, swimming up from the abyss below with these open jaws and these this mouthful of teeth. And then as the uh, those jaws are sort of working their way through his feet and his legs, uh, these tentacles start like going into his face, like through his eyes and start like scraping along his jawbone and ultimately just uh, peeling off his face from his skull like uh, cheese from a slice of pizza. It's really, uh, really uh, kind of a fun little set piece there. But but that now now that he's gone, you know, David is really like you thinking like what am I going to do? So he goes and seeks out a woman named Emma Dedalus in upstate New York. Actually the woman who had trained Inspector Long in the ways of ritual magic. And uh David goes and tells Emma that uh you know what happened to his sister and that he wants to get uh even uh with this Professor Fry. He wants to destroy him. And and Emma says, yes, you, uh, you know, you were meant to do this, David. Uh, and, you know, this is going to be a hard journey, you know, training. She said, I will train you. But, um, you know, she's like, you were meant to be a magician. She said, you were born to do this. So, so she trains David, you know, body and spirit in the ways of ritual magic. And, um, and so, so that David can kind of uh, destroy Theodore along and sort of restore uh, balance to the universe or some nonsense like that. And um, it's not going to be easy because as we learn, this uh, Professor Fry is actually immortal and has actually, uh, he actually performed a ritual at one point, sacrificed himself uh, to a um, some medieval spirit and is actually possessed or has the, the spirit of some medieval uh, demon inside of him. So, so it's going to be no easy feat destroying him, but, uh, but that's what David does. And, uh, or that's what David tries to do. And, you know, and, 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 that, and that's your basic book here. Um, the book, uh, is actually just incredibly fast paced. This thing was propulsive, uh, really moves along at a steady clip. Um, it's got a lot of dialogue, you know, which always, you know, makes things go a little faster. Um, it was, you know, very breezy. It actually, you know, almost read like a screenplay at times or or maybe more accurately, uh, kind of f at times felt like a novelization to a movie that uh, Vestron Video would have put out circa 1990. It, it feels like a, like a novelization to a Vestron movie that never was made. Uh, almost Lehman-esque in its pacing, which, which I, you know, really appreciated, uh, especially after the last book that I reviewed, which was kind of... Also an Avon book, curiously, but which was kind of a slog to get through at times. Um, it, it was really fast. But yeah, this book just um, – it was just fun. I, I did take some notes. It's been a couple of weeks since I read this, so I'm going to refer to my notes here. But here are some of the things that, that we get in this book. Um, so we get humanoid lizard creatures uh, from another dimension that materialize out of swirling green mist. Uh, in fact, we get a lot of just uh, shimmering, swirling green light in this book. Uh, it's very atmospheric in that regard. Uh, we get demon dogs conjured from mud and skeletons. 
we get just a universe positively alive with spirits and forces and messages and meanings. Uh, it's kind of like this, at one point they describe it as a, quote, exploding soup of just different sort of elements, just fighting for each other, fighting against each other, good versus evil and all that. Uh, we get Latin incantations. We get magically induced uh, cigarette lighters that explode in people's faces. We get demons exploding in waves of green light. We get ethereal white beings hovering in astral planes. Um, just a lot of just crazy, weird, fun stuff. Um, but yeah, the book is concise. Uh, it is well-written. Uh, it's got some cool imagery and set pieces, uh, especially the climax uh, when David and this Professor Fry have their final showdown. Uh, it was very, very fun, wonderfully over the top and uh, cheesy, a lot of cheesy dialogue, especially in that last scene. Um, but, you know, cool imagery there. The whole the, the book does have some cool imagery. Um, got a coda at the end here with some amusing sort of new age nonsense. Um, you know, yeah, just fun, light, uh, airy entertainment. I mean, this book is like the literary equivalent to Airheads candy. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes you just want a little candy. You're not going to get anything deep here. You're not going to get a head scratcher, but uh, you just want, you know, a way to pass the time with some mindless, uh, fun entertainment that feels like, you know, one of those Vestron films from the late 80s or early 90s. Uh, this is your this is your book. This is your book right here. Um, just uh, you know, light, fun, silly entertainment. I I enjoyed it though. You know, check it out if you can find it for cheap. I wouldn't pay you know more than five or six bucks for it, but I don't think it's that expensive uh, to or that hard to find. So yeah, that's the fair rules of evil. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thanks for watching as always. Uh, hope to be back very soon with another video. Until then. I will see you guys later. Take it easy. Peace.